Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of the EW2020 WWE. As today is the final premium live event stop on the road to WrestleMania. Jesus, God. <laughs> My recording schedule is so out of whack. It feels weird to record things at the end of March. I've I've been waiting to record this since like mid-February. Jesus. Oh, God. But here we are. Elimination Chamber. Three Chamber matches. All different. we got uh, the Women's World Tile, just a six-way. Uh, on NXT, we've got the Family with the Mafia Raja in a 3v3. Of course, on SmackDown, we've got Cody Rhodes and the Roman Empire in a five-on-one gauntlet Chamber match. As Cody looks to earn himself a Universal Title match at WrestleMania. Plenty of title matches on the show as well. Uh, and also Thaddeus Bullard versus The Fiend, which... Doesn't that sound like fun? Uh, so without further ado, let's just jump right into the final premium live event on the Road to WrestleMania, shall we? It's time for the Elimination Chamber, which gets underway on the pre-show with the Cruiserweight Tag Team titles on the line from NXT. The champions, Legado Humberto and Santos, taking on MS. Okay, where's Lee Nash Carter returning, making a save for Trey Miguel this past episode of NXT, and now going straight after Legado and their Cruiserweight tag titles. You know, I feel like I say a lot for, a lot for the Cruiserweights, but fast-paced, a lot of athleticism. I mean, you've seen MSK, you've seen Santos and Humberto, <laughs> you know what they're all capable of, it's going to be athletic, isn't it? God. Uh, and yeah. They're all going to battle it out. Oh, looking to come out on top. In the end, though. Uh, they're not just tag teams. They're groups. And so the group dynamic playing a bit of advantage. Dom and Trey at ringside. Start to get into it a little bit. Uh, Zelina getting Trey from behind, though. And blindsiding him. Allowing Dom to get the advantage. Which distracts MSK. And allows Humbo Docorio. Uh, and Santos Escobar hit the Patrimonio driver. As Humbo picks up the victory here for a 73 Nice little pre-show match here. Uh, Legado keep a hold of their Cruiserweight Tag Titles. 70 Santos, 69 for Humberto, 66 Nash, 64 Wes. They're both doing all right still, uh, which is nice to see after a long, long, long time out. As, yes, Legado keep a hold of those Cruiserweight Tag Team Titles. For the second year in a row, Santos and Humberto will be entering WrestleMania, the Cruiserweight Tag Champs. Lovely. It's time to start the full show, though, here at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. As always, premium live event, what do we open with? An opening video package, of course. Highlight some big matches. Uh, of course, I didn't even mention it. We've got Randy, Pete Dunn, and Kyle O'Reilly, who just returned. Taking on Triple H, Austin Fury, and Seth Rollins. If Orton, Pete, and Kyle win, they get their Mania matches. Orton against Fury, Kyle against Hunter, Pete against Rollins. A lot to play for there. Women's World Chamber, Family Mafia Raja. Cody vs. the Roman Empire, 100. There's a lot going on in Elimination Chamber. <laughs> a lot to get into. And get into it, we shall straight away with the Women's World Championship Chamber. Yeah, we're kicking off with a chamber. We've got three chambers tonight, so yeah, spread them out a little bit. One now, one at the end, one in the middle. Uh, and yeah, we're going to kick things off with the Women's World Championship Chamber. Um, outcomes uh, for the pods. Um... The Women's World Champ, Io Sky, Becky, Asuka, and Dakota Kai. There you go. Uh, they all come out into their respective pods. Of course, Dakota Kai winning the gauntlet match, uh, returning to win the gauntlet match as well. This past Raw to confirm she will be entering number six. Uh, and entering one and two, kicking things off here, is going to be Bailey and Paige. Bailey and Paige out, into the ring, starting things for us. Get into it, you know. Yeah, it's just Bailey and Paige fighting for a little bit until the timer goes down. You know, spinny lights. Who's coming out at number three? The Women's World Champion, EO Sky is. EO Sky makes her entrance into the match and right into a Bailey and Paige. Yeah, I mean, all, all these women want to win this. They want to become Women's World Champ. Go to WrestleMania for that match with Kyrie Sane. Bailey. I mean, yeah, Io's the champ. She wants to still be the champ. She just talks a lot of trash to Io, to Kyrie. Uh, she wants to keep on that road. Paige returning at SummerSlam, setting her sights now on becoming a, a champion again. 
and Bailey, the role model, made her return at Rumble. She wants to be a champ. So they just get into it, battling it out. Uh, and yeah, Paige tiring a little bit. You know, kicked two things off with Bailey. Intense. EO out now. Intense. The gauntlet match. She was in there for quite a while. Intense. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, as number four, you know, round and round it goes. Out comes Becky Lynch, the man. Uh, big time Becky Lynch. Uh, Becky rushing out of her pod immediately, setting her sights in the ring on Paige, of course. Uh, having her problems with Paige since Paige eliminated her at the Rumble. Becky immediately into the ring, turns Paige around, grabs her, manhandle slam, covers one, two, three. Paige eliminated by Becky Lynch here. Becky Lynch taking a moment to taunt. You know, to taunt Paige, to tell her to get the hell out of the big time Becky Lynch's ring, to taunt the fans who are booing her. Who cares about them, though? Huh? Uh, yeah, and then Becky can get into a VO, she can get into a Bailey, but she she takes a moment, you know, just just to taunt, because <laughs> of course she does. Uh, before we get number five into the ring, Asuka, of course. Uh, and yeah, Bailey, EO, Becky, Asuka. Four very good superstars, four very intense superstars, though. So, yeah, all battling it out, all varying degrees of hurt. Asuka very fresh, though, um, which is just going to increase the varying of hurt on everyone else when she gets in the ring and starts kicking, isn't it? As, yeah, <laughs> all four of them battling it out. Uh, as then, you know, God, how am I doing this? Um, yeah, Asuka, big head kick takes down Becky, Asuka and Io going at it, Asuka manages to take down Io, Asuka and Bailey get into it, as the timer runs down, no lights, Arr. Dakota's cage opens, Dakota taking her time, walking out the cage, surveying, as uh, Asuka goes for a big head kick on Bailey, Bailey ducks though, grabs Asuka, Bailey to belly, covers just for a two though, um, as Bailey to her feet, very tired after kicking things off, and Dakota climbs into the ring, and Bailey turns around to Dakota, and they both just stop for a moment, looking at each other. Dakota getting right into Bailey's face, and the two women just staring down for a moment, not exchanging blows yet. They're just staring at each other. They look like they're about to get into it. When they start laughing. Dakota and Bailey both just start laughing. Uh, <laughs> and then they hug. Dakota and Bailey, big laughs. And then a nice hug. And then they're going to get to work. The two of them, together, go around uh, and, and really get to work. Beating down a bit more on EO together. Asuka's right here. We'll beat down on her as well, shall we? <laughs> Uh, and then finally, Becky Lynch to her feet now, attacking Bailey from behind. But Dakota quick into it, get working Becky down. Bailey back to her feet now as they get Becky into the corner. Dakota with the running corner kick. There's a, definitely a word for it, but the running corner kick dazes Becky, stumbles out towards Bailey. Bailey to Bailey, one, two, three. Becky Lynch eliminated here. Whilst they then turn their attentions to Asuka, the only other woman in the ring at the time. Uh, and yeah, Asuka and Dakota and Bailey, there you go. Uh, they <laughs> Asuka trying. She's a fighter, she's a warrior, she's not going to back down. She does her best in this two-on-one situation. It's a two-on-one situation in the end. Uh, and they work Oscar down. Uh, and in the end, yeah, Oscar gets hit with the GTK to go to kick from Dakota Kai. And Dakota Kai covers for the one, two, three. Oscar eliminated. As Bailey and Dakota uh, very much work their way through the field here now, haven't they? <laughs> God. Um, and yeah. They take a moment, taking it in, 
but then it seems to kind of snap into place that the job's not done yet, is it? But they can't see Eo. She's not in the ring, she's not ringside, they're looking around for her frantically. You know, just standing in the ring next to each other, just looking around. And then kind of in sync, as the crowd kind of starts to swell, they both turn their attentions to look at the top of one of the pods, where of course Eo has started her to perch, as Eo does. Uh, <laughs> and then Eo, you know, big dive and crossbody down, taking out both Dakota and Bailey. Eo quickly rushing, climbing to the top rope. Moon salt to Dakota Kai covers one, two, three. Dakota eliminated, and then Bailey, who's been here since the very start as well, taking out that crossbody. She's not doing too well, is she? Eo quickly back to her feet again, back to the top rope. Another moon salt to Bailey this time covers one, two, three. As your winner. Of this Women's World Championship Elimination Chamber match. And still the Women's World Champion is EO Sky. For an 86, very good match. 95 EO, 88 Oscar, 85 Becky, 79 Dakota, 75 Paige, 70 Bailey. Happy with that. Yeah, kind of blending a lot together. Out of Becky Page stuff. Um, starting something new here. With Bailey and Dakota as well. A uh, nice little moment, you know, for me personally as well, is the final three, of course. Bailey, Dakota, and Eo. Damage control for life. Uh, never in my universe, though. <laughs> as, yeah, Eo Sky, the kingpin, comes out on top with her women's World tire in hand. Stands tall. She's tired. She's done a lot of jumping off very high things, as Eo does. Uh, but, yeah, Eo's tired. Raising that women's World tire in the air, though. When Kyrie's music hits. And Kyrie walks out onto the stage, smile on her face, spyglass in hand, a pirate using it to look down at the ring at her WrestleMania opponent, EO Sky. For a 96. Good match, good post, good start to things here. I'm happy. Good. Um, let's carry on, shall we? I'm going to jump to NXT. For a tag team match between Hit Row, Ashanti D. Adonis, and Top Dollar, because who's hotter than Top Dollar? Not Nodder. Not Nodder is hotter than Top Dollar. Taking on the NXT champion Isaiah Swerve Scat and Montez Fort. Uh, Hit Row attacking Montez Swerve, taking exception to this with his former group. Um, and having this match. Just, just let's squash the beef, boys, shall we? Yeah, Hit Row versus Swerve and Tez. Mainly Tez is in the ring. Okay, Swerve never really... Swerve starts in the ring when the match begins. Gets into a little with Hit Row. Uh, but Montez very quickly asking for the tag. He wants in, okay? He wants to squash this beef with Hit Row. Uh, the only way you squash beef with your hands and fist. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, he's mainly a lot of just Montez versus Top Dollar and Ashanti. Big battling it out. Um, match going on, though. In the end, Tez gets a shanty Adonis down. Climbs to the top rope, readying for a big frog splash. He's tiring, though. Um, when the ropes are pulled, stop, you know, disrupting his balance, and he goes down, groin first, onto the top rope. Uh, and the ropes were disturbed. By Isaiah Swerve Scott. Isaiah smile on his face as he goes over and shoves Montez up the top rope, immediately climbing into the ring and looking down at Montez. Ashanti to his, you know, reaches it down, helps Ashanti to his feet, top dollar in the ring as well. And the three men just look down at Tez and then all together start just kicking the poop out of him, you know. Referee gives them a count. They don't care about a count. In the end, having to call for the bell. So Swerve and Tez get the win by DQ here. Uh, but yeah, Tez ain't looking like a winner for an 80. 82 Tez, 80 Swerve, 61 Ashanti, 48 top dollar. That's all right. Um, as yeah, big beat down on Tez here. Swerve to the top rope. Hits a Swerve stomp onto Tez. Uh, 
and then yeah swerve raising the nxt championship in the air with top dollar ashanti and b fab all by his side over tez for a 100 good lovely nice yeah good good um just a moment as then next up we're gonna go to smackdown um for the match we're all waiting for it's the fiend versus the fad yes i know you're very excited Fadius bullard versus the fiend bray wyatt um you know have a moment before the entrance where fad asks keith to stay backstage says he, he wants to deal with this himself fad out the fiend out as well the relic his favorite pet and scarlet standing at ringside as the fiend and the fad get up I, I, i'm just gonna keep calling them the fad for a minute aren't i they just get into it fiend and fad yeah balling it out Thaddeus trying here but the fiend is very strong isn't he and fad it's it's been a minute since he's been in that ring really but still he tries his best the two men battling it out Thaddeus goes for a bullard boot onto the fiend but the fiend just kind of grabs his foot in midair and just holds it just staring at bullard before he very forcibly shoves him back fad falling to the floor kind of landing awkwardly you know holding his leg for a minute in in a little quite visible pain Thaddeus hurts the fiend just looks down on him kind of laughing you know you, you can tell he's laughing fad you know getting to his feet trying his best here injured leg at all charges at the fiend as quickly as he can stumbling a little bit but the fiend pulls him down and plants him with a sister abigail for the one two three as the fiend comes out on top here for an 80 90 fiend 61 fad happy with that happy with that match wise that's fine um as yes Fad yes Bullard comes up short here against the fiend. Sadly, I'm so sorry, everyone. Um, as yeah, as yeah, you know, fiend relic skull in the ring. Keith Lee coming out to make sure they don't do anything. But Keith begins climbing into the ring, and as he fully climbs in, lights out back on the fiend relic crop skull on there we can get some medical tension in there for fad which is lovely which is lovely before we jump over to monday night raw for the monday night raw tag team championship shall we it is adam cole and finn balor your tag team champs taking on kevin owens and a mystery partner kevin owens and finn balor have been beefing since december january around about one of them isn't it uh, they've been beefing for quite a while, haven't they? And yeah, it's time to squash that beef. Finn, looking forward to a chance to fight Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens says he's got a partner. And he's going to take these tag titles from Finn. And Cole. Uh, mainly Finn, though. He doesn't like Finn, does he? Uh, and yeah. Kevin Owens out to the ring first, and then Balor and Cole making their entrance. Balor and Owens both in the ring. Oh, come on, Owens. Where's your pal, huh, then? Uh, oh, wait, no. You ain't got no mates, have you? No, no, no. Balor, some lovely little taunting from everyone's favourite Irishman. Uh, as Kevin's just kind of stands smugly in the corner, in the corner, just kind of laughing to himself, you know. And then Kevin just takes a moment and then he climbs out onto the apron and he grabs a hold of the tag rope and just stares about at Finn Balor. Finn Balor looking a bit confused. You're right there, Kevin. The, the, the last time I saw you, did I give you a bit too hard a knock in the noggin, huh? Uh, come on, get in the ring, let's go. Kevin just shakes his head saying, no, 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 no. My partner is going to start. Finn Balor, still a little bit confused, but his confusion is quickly... Um, shall we say, answered, as he is promptly hit with a massive super kick to the back of the head by Adam Cole. Laying Finn Balor out, Finn Balor dazed and confused, 
you know, crawling to the centre of the ring, getting himself up a little bit, still not fully sure what's going on, as Adam Cole stares across at his fellow tag champ, reaches down, pulls down his knee pad, runs across, and hits... What's the word I'm looking for? The last shot. Laying Balor out, okay? Bell's already been rung. We're all confused. Uh, <laughs> shades of Night of Champs 2008. Uh, as Adam Cole's smiling, that smile walks over to the corner. Kevin Owens reaches out his hand, holding the tag rope, of course. This is tag team wrestling, everyone. Uh, and Finn ba and uh, uh, Kevin Owens and Finn Adam Carter tag Owens into the ring, enjoying this, walking around smugly, Finn Balor. Uh, then, yeah, Kevin Owens picking Finn Balor up. What's he going to do? Stunner? Nah, nah, nah. Go on, pop, we'll go for a classic. Tosses him, bounces off the apron, pop-up powerbomb. Cover one, two, three. Your winners and the new Raw Tag Team Champions, Adam Cole and F Kevin Owens. For a 70, that's just because it was very short. 95 Cole, 95 Owens, 88 Balor. This could have been a banger, but it was very, very short. Hey ho, here we go. Uh, as yeah, Cole and Owens stand tall. A uh, little post-match segment so I can actually give them the Raw Tag Titles. Because you can't change hands in a handicap match. For a 100. Yeah. Owens and Cole are the new Raw Tag Champs. So, hey, we got one new Raw Tag Champ. Um, which is something, I guess, you know. <laughs> Title changing hands. <laughs> you know. Uh, as yeah, Owens and Cole on top. Let's continue. Let's jump to SmackDown next, shall we, for the Universal Championship. The Tribal Chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns. Maybe a bit preoccupied recently with Cody Rhodes, but you can't look past this. Because he takes on Tyler Breeze. Now, Tyler Breeze, he's had a big year. He's had a big year. Uh, Post-WrestleMania last year, going to SmackDown with Fandango. Dango getting hurt. You know, going out on his own a little bit, taking down control, winning the US title at SummerSlam from Xavier Woods. Losing it just before Survivor Series, just before he has a chance to activate Option C, but at Survivor Series, being a part of that War Games team that beat the Roman Empire. Tyler Breeze looking to crown off this amazing year he's had by becoming Universal Champion. Can he? We'll see. Roman and Tyler both going at it here. This is a war. You know? Maybe the, the kind of story of the match as I see it is Roman Reigns has looked past Tyler. Roman's looking at the main event. He's looking to see if he has to fight Cody at Mania. He's looking at WrestleMania, whoever he may fight. He's not looking at Tyler. Catching kind of off guard a bit. Roman going maybe easy. You know, get to a point where Roman's setting up for the spear. Ooh, I'll charge it across the ring. But maybe not running as fast as he can. Because he thinks, oh, you know, just casual stroll. Put it into second gear. Let's ease this out. And Tyler catching him with a supermodel kick out of nowhere mid-spear. Taking down the Tribal Chief and covering him uh, for a 2.999 kick out that only Roman Reigns can do so, so well. Tyler coming so close. And maybe Roman realising at that point, oh boy, I should probably focus on this one, shouldn't I? Uh, and turning it up a little bit, and as the Tribal Chief turns it up a little bit, you know, things change a little bit. Uh, but Tyler giving it a really good go, you know, he hits the leg drop in honour of Dango, coming so close once again. In the end though, your winner, and still, the Universal Champion is Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns keeping hold of his title with a spear in the end for a 78. Alright match, 91 Roman, 70 Tyler. I'm fine with that. Not enough psychology. Roman Reigns. LTW. LTW. He keeps hold of his title though. Roman Reigns still the Universal Heavyweight Champion. Lovely. And we're about halfway through the show, which means it's time for another chamber match, everybody, from NXT. The other match you've all been waiting for. The Chamber. The Family. 
Tony D'Angelo, Chris Jericho, and Happy Happy Harland taking on the Mafia Raja Jinder Mahal, Veer Mahan, and the Great Carly. Jesus Christ, what a match I've booked here, haven't it? Isn't it? <laughs> Pods fill up. We're starting this match though with Veer Mahan and Tony D'Angelo. Tony says, I'm the boss, huh? I'm the head of this family. I'm the Don. I, I'm starting this. I'm kind of daring Mahal to do the same, but Mahal saying, no, 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 you can fight Veer. Which, you know, your prerogative, I guess. And yeah, Veer overpowering Tony a little bit, but um, Tony giving it a go. Tony giving it all he's got. And hanging in there as much as he can uh, until... Buzzer sounds, number three. Who's it going to be? Which team's going to get the advantage? Spinning round and round and round and round and round it goes. Uh, and in the end, the team that gets the advantage is the family. As Harland's pot opens, much to Tony's happiness. Harland walking out ever so menacingly. Veer stopping attacking Tony and throwing him down. He wants to fight that one. Veer and Harland, you know, Harland climbing into the ring and then Veer and Harland just getting into it. Beating the hell out of each other. Harling, you know, giving it his all. Veer taking advantage a little bit. Then Tony flying in as well. Numbers advantage the family gets on top. But not too on top. Veer's very strong still. Uh, manages to hang in there enough um, until Buzzer Sounds, number four, and Jinder Mahal comes out. Immediately into the ring to help Veer to even the numbers game to sort things out beautiful and yeah two on two Harland and Veer going at it Tony and Mahal going at it everyone's happy number five Chris Jericho into the mix the family the numbers advantage again uh and taking advantage of the numbers advantage a little bit you know working Jinder down uh and getting kind of a 3v1 against the Veer all working him over. Jer Jericho hitting a Judas effect. Harland storming into him to try to get him off his feet. Tony hitting a forget about it. Harland making the cover. No, no, Jericho is going to take the cover, isn't he? It's Jericho. Uh, covering there for a one, two, three. Vimahan eliminated here. And Jinder all on his own in a corner. Not looking too happy about that particular situation. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what for. Uh, as much as Jinder's happiness, the buzzer sounds. The cage door opens, and the great Carly walks out. Jinder pulling himself up as Carly gets into the ring, and Jinder just kind of pointing Carly towards his hand, go on then, get him. Um, and they, they come at him, Jericho rushing at Carly, Carly shoving Jericho down, Tony coming at him, shoving Tony down, Harland getting a lot more offence. Onto Carly, working him down. You know, wearing him out a little bit. Um, trying to get him off his feet. He runs across the ring, bounces against the rope, comes against Carly, throws himself at him. Carly's standing tall. Does it again, Carly stands tall. One more time, charges at Carly, but Carly, just in time, gets his hand up. Brain chop. Harland down. Mahal charging over and covering Harland. One, two, three. Free. Happy Harland eliminated here. Tony's lost his giant. Tony and Jericho versus Carly and Mahal here. I really didn't think this is the type of match I'd be booking at the start of the year, honestly. <laughs> Post WrestleMania 38. I didn't know this is the way I was going, but here we are. The story happens and God does it happen. Um, Mahal quite tired though. And Jericho and Tony, even with their differences, maybe coming up with a plan. So Jericho giving Tony some, you know, an idea. Talking it over. You know, Tony's a man with a plan. Even more than D. Brian Kendrick was. Uh, and yeah, they managed to take Mahal out a little bit. And then working together on Carly. Just kind of, you know, spreading out. Carly trying to, you know, tearing himself out. Just turning, looking at the two guys. Um, and in the end... Jericho climbing up onto the second rope, jumping, hitting a twisting Judas effect on Carly from the rope. You know, stunning Carly, taking him down to one knee uh, as Tony takes advantage and hits Carly with a forget about it. And Jericho and 
D'Antoni together, yeah, jump on Carly and cover him for a one, two, three. Carly eliminated. Mahal to his feet, you know, charging into the ring whilst they're both down, attacking them, trying to wear them down. But in the end, numbers of minds enough. Judas effect to Jinder Mahal. He's about to go down, but T Jericho grabs him, tosses him into Tony. Forget about it for the one, two, three. Your winners are the family. Jericho and Tony, the survivors here, uh, as yes. Uh, that's not the all elimination order, but yeah, Tony and Jericho did survive. So TW got that right. 56, it's fine. I, I wasn't expecting the world. Carly's here getting a 19, for Christ's sake. 56 is pretty good. 60 freeze for Mahal and Jericho. 60 Tony, 52 Veer, 40 Harland, 9 Carly. Happy enough. Uh, as Jericho and Tony stand tall. The family stand tall. Beautiful. Tony and Jericho, they're going to stand tall. There you go. For a 75. Pretty good as well. Pretty good as well. Happy with that. Um, let's stay on NXT. Let's go title was. NXT North American title-wise, shall we? Uh, as yeah, Duke Sterling. I mean, star for our Duke Sterling. Getting his big entrance with his nicknames. You know, D-Breakout star of NXT. The Duke. The NXT North American champion, Duke Sterling. Big dub by his side. Nate Preston by his side. Against Mustafa Ali. Uh, and yeah. Both men going for it. Most of all the experience. Also got a lot of agility as well. Uh, Duke surprising him maybe a little bit. Both men battling out. In the end though, it is only one man who can come out on top. Uh, Nate Preston you know, jumps on the apron at one point. Starts undoing a turnbuckle or something. Mr. Farley flying in, drop clicking him off the apron. Looks over at Big Dub. Big Dub just standing there like, I'm not getting involved. Um... <laughs> Uh, and yeah, in the end, it is Duke Sterling who comes out on top. He hits God's last gift and gets the one, two, three, to keep a hold of his NXT North American title for a 59. Yeah. Nice match. 41 Duke, 54 Mustafa. I'll take a 59 for that. I'll take a 59 for that. Duke Sterling on top. Duke Sterling still the NXT North American champion. Lovely. We're going to go backstage. Uh, and backstage we find D4G, destined for greatness, Carmelo Hayes, Eli Cassidy, and Marcus Redding. Walking around, smiles on their faces, having a laugh. When they bump into SmackDown's Million Dollar Champion, Jade Cargill, formerly of Destined for Greatness. Melo saying, you know, it's good to see you again, Jade. With a little golden upgrade there as well. Mm -mm -mm. Nope, that's a trick. I don't know why I did that. That was instinct. <laughs> And Jay's saying, yeah, yeah, I, I got this golden upgrade. And I see that you three have nothing. And they're a bit taken aback, saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're making moves down in NXT still. Destined for greatness, you know how we do. And Jay say, are you? Are you making moves? Because all I see you doing is walking around happy because what? Because you beat old man Roderick Strong a few nights ago for nothing? Listen, if you three are happy forever being destined for greatness, if that's enough for you, then so be it. But if you ever want to be, as she raises the million dollar title, greatness, maybe you should do something about it. For a 96, walks away. Jade Cargill, some harsh words for her former stable mates here. Some very harsh words from Jade Cargill. Let's stay in NXT, though. Let's jump to the NXT Women's Championship match. I got Tricky on my mind, because Tricky is coming out. Yes, Bianca Belair versus k ass at E-Rain. Trick Williams at ringside. Tate and Paxley at ringside as well. And yeah, Belair and Rain just kind of go to war here. Both women leaving it all in that ring. Both women want to come out on top. 
you know. And this match goes on quite a while. A lot of near falls, both coming close, both hit their finishers. And in the end, how I imagine this ending is Bianca has Cassidy on her back, ready to hit the KOD. But Cassidy hits some elbows, uh, manages to you know wiggle free off Bianca's back. Uh, Bianca stumbling forward, but Cassidy grabs onto Bianca's braid and kind of pulls her back in harshly. Bianca turning around um, and raising her arm up. And simultaneously, Cassidy Rain hits the clothes, the ripcord clothesline. You know, she's ripcorded her back and she hits the clothesline. But at the same time, Bianca's arm coming up uh, and Bianca's elbow smashes Cassidy square in the face. And both women go down. Neither covering the other or anything. Both women just down on the ground. Bianca hit with another ripcord clothesline. You know, hair yanked as well. Cassidy hits elbow square to the face. She's already had a KOD this match, for Christ's sake. Both women down. The referee no choice but to start counting. And in the end, the referee no choice but to count to ten. As this match ends as a draw. Both women just out of it. Failed to beat the count of 10. This match done. Cassidy off her game, sadly. Oh, unlucky Cass. 81 Bianca, 64 Cassidy. 81 for the match. I'm happy with that. Um, as yeah. And the way I picture it as well, Cassidy is the first to her feet. You know, the medics come out for both of them, but Cassidy... Before they, they fully check on her, just like, I'm good, I'm good. You know, rolling out of the ring herself, Trick and Tatum giving her a hand up the ramp. The medics checking on Bianca, though, for that 81. Lovely. Lovely. Um, yeah, Bianca keeps a hold of her NXT Women's Championship, but can't quite beat Cassidy here. Ooh, we've had a lot of NXT in a row here. Is that three in a row? Uh, let's mix it up a little, shall we? And let's go over to Monday nights and the Intercontinental Championship. Because it's a big one here. It is the new Intercontinental Champion, Bobby Lashley. With an almighty open challenge against an almighty competitor, John Cena. Lashley beating Andres Sanofi in an almighty open challenge this past Raw. And Cena coming out and giving Lashley himself an almighty open challenge for tonight. Lashley accepting... Cena looking to win the one title he's never won. Lashley looking to beat John Cena. That's a you know, big thing still. Uh, and yeah, Lashley and Cena just going to go at it. It's Lashley Cena. I don't think I have to describe it too much. You can probably see it in your head. Both men going for it. Both women want to come out on top. Um, In the end, Cena come kind of getting on top a little bit, though. Uh, Over Lashley as the match goes on. You know, he hits the... Shoulder barge, shoulder barge, scoop up on the floor, five knuckle shuffle, waiting for Lashley to get up to hit him with the AA. Um, but as he's waiting, jumps onto the apron, a hooded figure, wearing a hoodie, all in black, uh, and grabs hold of the ref and turns him around. The referee, like, who the hell are you? Distracted, as on the other side of the ring, another all black wearing hooded figure jumps onto the apron and smashes something into the back of Cena's head. We don't really see what it is, but he hits Cena in the back of the head with something and Cena stumbling forward, grabbing the back of his head, you know, grabbing that bald spot. <laughs> Sorry, John. <laughs> Sorry, John. Uh, yeah, Cena stumbling forward. That hooded figure jumping down, the other one jumping down as well, both just standing there and looking at the ring. Referee turning around, Lashley to his feet now, uh, kind of seeing his opportunity as Cena getting back to his feet a little bit, looking around uh, and kind of, you know, re regaining his composure just in time to watch Lashley storm in and hit him with a spear for the one, two, three. Your winner and still the Intercontinental Champion, Bobby Lashley. Uh, Lashley retaining here thanks to that interference from those masked men. 87 for the match. It was really good. 81 John, 74 Lashley. Really happy with that 87. That's, that's really good, actually. I didn't expect him to get that good. I'm happy with that. <laughs> I'm very happy with that. As, yeah, Lashley stands tall. Title raised. The two hooded men staying at ringside, though, just staring into the ring. You know, waiting patiently 
Lashley out of the ring, MVP with him going up the ramp. And that's the point where those masked men climb into the ring. Looking down at John Cena. Then they look across at each other and they drag John Cena to their feet. Um, and yeah, one of them grabs Cena from behind and lifts him up. And then they plant him down with a ticket to mayhem. It is at that point that the two hooded men, both to their feet, standing side by side above the fallen Cena, kind of turn to look at each other. And then they grab their hoods, grab their masks, pull down the hood, pull off the mask, and reveal themselves to be, if the finisher wasn't the giveaway, Jagger Reed and Rip Fowler, the grizzled young veterans. And then they look forward, they both look directly into the hard cam, like they're peering into the viewer's soul. They grab their right hands and put them onto their hearts. And they raise their left hands into the air. And they say, he will be redeemed. For 100, lovely, lovely. <laughs> lovely, God, I get a little culty, shall I? 100. Lovely. The grizzled young veterans here, three times NXT UK Tag Team Champions, finally making their main roster debut and taking out John Cena. That's a pretty big debut, isn't it? God. Yeah. Cena laid out here. Grizzled young veterans standing over him with that simple message that he will be redeemed. Who is he? What will he be redeemed of? Wait and see, shall we? Um... And stay on Monday Night Raw for a certain six-man tag team match. It's going to be a long show, but there is a hell of a lot going on, isn't there? Uh, and it's a big one. It is Triple H, Rollins, the WWE Champion, and Austin Theory, the Chosen, versus Randy Orton, Pete Dunne, and Kyle O'Reilly. Men they've targeted, men they took out, men they hurt. Kyle injured at SummerSlam. Pete hit with a car heading into Survivor Series. Been through a lot. Six man tag. A long match. Everyone getting a chance in the ring. All kinds of combinations. With you know, very specifically, there's only one combination that I don't really want to see here. The only combination I wouldn't do in this match is Austin Theory and Randy Orton. If you haven't noticed the last few weeks, that's kind of what's been happening. Orton really wants to beat the poop out of Austin Theory. Um, but Austin, yeah, no, he'll just run from that, you know. When it when it comes to the beef with Orton, Austin's a vegan, right? He's just, he's, he's, he's not about that life. And you know what? If I'd pissed off Randy Orton, I also wouldn't want to be in a situation where he could punch me in the face. So I kind of get it, Austin. But yeah, we see lots of combinations. Everyone has a shot. In the end, though... Only one man, one team can win. And a team that do come out on top. And earn themselves their matches at WrestleMania. Is Randy on Pete Dunne and Kyle O'Reilly. And he had Pete Dunne pins Austin Theory with the bitter end to get their matches. For a 90, a little bit disappointing. Kyle O'Reilly, I have to change his gimmick. Um, I'll make a note. Kyle O'Reilly gimmick stale change we'll see if i remember that uh 95 kyle 94 seth 92 pete 87 austin 80 Orton, 73 triple h austin's had a big year he's really improved fair play uh but yes just under 26 minutes and it confirms that at wrestlemania we got three big matches to look forward to now it will be randy orton austin fury austin fury will not be able to run from randy orton there it will be one on one. Kyle O'Reilly and Triple H will fight in a Summer Slam rematch. Um, Kyle getting his hands on Triple H once and for all. And Pete Dunne will face Seth Rollins for the WWE Championship. 98, lovely. God, I'm hyped for all those matches. <laughs> it's exciting. WrestleMania is starting to fill out a little bit. Uh, and I think we've got some really banger matches there which I'm excited about. I am. Hopefully they're good. Fingers crossed. I have faith. Let's continue the show, though. And we're going to jump over to Friday nights now for the Million Dollar Championship match. It is Jade Cargill, who we saw earlier tonight. Um, and Rhea Ripley, one-on-one. -on -one. They've been going at it since the Rumble, really. 
You know, these two mothers just mothering it out for the title of m m motherist mother, you know? <laughs> Million Dollar Champion. Yeah, can't get over it. They're both big superstars. Both are looking to prove themselves. Who's the strongest? Who's the biggest? Who's the best? And yeah, it's a battle between these two superstars. Cargill and Ripley just battling it out, going for it. In the end, though, Ripley manages to get on top when the lights go out. When they come back on, Portela Muerte is in the ring. Muerte just clocks Ripley, hits her with the Death Valley driver. There you go. Uh, lights off, light on. Muerte's gone. Ref's getting back to his feet. Cargill sees her chance. Jaded. One, two, three. Jade Cargill keeping a hold of her million dollar championship for an 83. Good match. 79 Ripley, 71 Jade. Happy with that. Uh, as yeah, Jade Cargill comes out on top thanks to a little helping hand from the Women's Universal Champion. But Della Muerte, who has seemingly set her sights on to Rhea Ripley for that 83. Lovely. God. Um, as we're about ready for the main event, a match I'm really excited about. Um, before then, uh, the Roman Empire make their entrance as a group. You know, all five of them. Roman coming out onto the stadium as well to give some last words. They all head off. Solo will be starting in the ring. Everyone else enters their pods. Uh, and then we go backstage. Because, A, it's not SmackDown, but I will not miss out a chance for Kayla Braxton. With with Cody Rhodes to get his final thoughts. And Cody says that this is his chance. He came back to WWE for this. To be a world champion. A thing he dreamed of since he was a child. To be a world champion. <sighs> And this is his chance to get that opportunity to finish his story. He doesn't care how many people he has to go through. Roman could have put the whole SmackDown roster in that chamber and Cody would have found a way. But now, tonight's his night. For a 100, Cody ready for a first time ever, ladies and gentlemen. The Elimination Chamber one versus five gauntlet match. Cody versus the Roman Empire. I'll remind you of the rules again. Cody Rhodes and Solo Soko will start in the ring. If Solo pins Cody, the match is over and the Roman Empire win. If Cody pins Solo, then Solo Soko is eliminated and another member of the Roman Empire will be released from one of the pods. And the match will continue until Cody Rhodes is pinned and eliminated. And the Roman Empire win, or there are no members of the Roman Empire remaining. And Cody Rhodes wins and earns himself a Universal Championship match with Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Bing, bang, boom. Couldn't be simpler. Cody and Solo start. Big battle. Solo's a strong guy. Solo's a tough guy. Um, I, I wouldn't want to fight Solo. You know? <laughs> Would you? Let me know in the comments. I if you do, I'm, God knows what's up with you, but hey. Yeah, Cody and Solo batting it out. Uh, big Samoan spike to Cody at one point for a two. Cody battling through, though, and in the end, managing to hit Solo with the crossroads for a one, two, three. Solo Sokoa eliminated. But Cody, you know, Solo managed to stay in for like 10 minutes. So Cody's already starting to tire. He took the Samoan spike. He's hurt a little bit, you know. He's got four more guys to get through. Uh, as the buzzer sounds, or who's it going to be? It's Marshall Von Erich. Uh, and Marshall Von Erich, you know, gets out of his cage. Cody waiting in the ring on bended knee, just watching. And Marshall Von Erich reaches in his pocket and pulls something out. When he quickly, suddenly rushes round the side to the pod where Ross Von Erich is. And quickly starts fiddling with the door. That's revealed he's got he, he's got something in his hand, not quite sure what it is, a tool of some sort. And he manages to pry, kind of, the door open. You know, the chain, he manages to break it, whatever. Opening Ross Von Eric's door. And Ross Von Eric, you know, walks out. And Cody, seeing this. And then Varys look over it, look at each other. Look at the tool. And then they look over at Brom Breaker's cage. 
and they see their chance. So they rush over to Bron Breaker's cage, but Cody, seeing this and thinking hell no, quickly rushes to cut them off. You know, grabbing Ross and tossing him into the cage, grabbing Marshall and tossing him into the cage, grabbing that tool, putting it through the... I'm trying to think of the word, the caging, tossing out the ring, keeping that well away from them. Uh, but Cody had a handicap match in this handicap gauntlet match, <laughs> you know. Uh, but hey, he's Cody Rose. He's not going to back down from a fight. So Cody having to deal with a two-on-one from the Von Erich brothers here. And Von Erich's working well, doing everything they can. But in the end, Cody manages to get them both down in his arms and hit them with a double crossroads. Stacks them up, covers them both. One, two, three. The Von Erichs both eliminated. But Cody Rhodes, once again, even more tired, even more banged up, even more hurt. You know, he's, de he's dealt with solo, he's dealt with this handicap situation, but he's, 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 he's going through it. Lights go round, buzzes off, and Jay Uso's the cage opens. And Jay doesn't immediately exit the pod. He just stands there for a minute. That glazed expression still in his face. You know, the Von Erichs out of the ring now, making the way towards the door, with them opening up, as Jay does leave and does get in the ring. Cody forcing himself to those feet. You know, he's swaying a little bit. He's tired. He's groggy. He's hurt. But he is on his feet, ready to go. And Jay just looking at Cody. Jay in thought, seemingly. About God knows what. About everything. About nothing. Who knows? Only Jay knows. And after a moment, quite a few moments of thought, Jay just reach up. He's just holding his head for a second. He's kind of smashing it as well. Like he can't decide what to do. In the end, he just shakes his head. Walks right past Cody. You know, goes under the rope. The door's still open as the Von Erics are just exiting. And Jay just walks right through the open door and heads up the ramp. You know, the rest are like, what the hell? But, you know, the Von Erics are out. Yeah, <laughs> just about. There's two of them, so it's taking a sec. But, uh, yeah, but actually, I'm starting to lock the door back up. Okay, just standing there, kind of in fort, but um, not in fort for too long because Jay's gone, he's left the cage, he's out of here. There's one guy left, though, isn't there? And the pod door opens for the United States champion, Bron Breaker. And Bron isn't looking too happy, shockingly immediately explosive as ever Bron Breaker out of his pod into the ring and takes down Cody Rhodes and this is a beat down Bron beating the hell out of Cody Rhodes you know grabbing him and tossing him out of the ring onto the outside flooring grabbing Cody and smashing him into the pod the plexiglass pod wall smashing him into the cage wall Bron very much using his environment to his advantage and beating the hell out of Cody Rhodes Grabbing Cody and tossing him back in the ring. In in the ring? No. Bron picking up Cody and hitting him with the, the delayed vertical, you know, the bench press power slam. Yeah. On the outside, onto that flooring. And it's, it's padded more than it used to be, but that's still going to hurt like hell now, isn't it? Cody screaming in pain with all the energy he's got as Bron Breaker just standing above him. And then Bron dragging Cody to his feet and tossing him back into the ring. Holding up one finger one more time, he says. As Bron pulls Cody up onto a bended knee, preparing to hit himself with a, hit Cody with another bench press power slam. And to Bron at least, put this away once and for all. When the music hits of everyone's favourite cowboy, Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, not seen since SummerSlam, when, of course, he was fighting for the Universal title in the triple threat of Keith Lee and Roman Reigns. And he was, well, yeah, he was <laughs> attacked uh, by... Bron Breaker, when Bron originally joined the Roman Empire, taking him out of the match. Bron walking out onto the stage and not looking happy. St Bron 
shoving Cody back down to the floor and staring up at Brock. Brock storming down to the ring. The ref's trying to stop him. He throwing the refs out the way. Bron met with the chamber door. You know, padlock shut, chain around it. That's not going to stop the beast, Brock Lesnar. Brock grabs the chain, locking up the chamber, and he just rips it. Yeah, it takes him a few moments. He's not going to meet it, but it takes him a few moments, and he does rip it, breaking the chain and opening the door, slamming that door open as Brock walks into the chamber, into the ring, storming into Brock. You know, Bron, Bron goes to clothesline Brock as he gets in the ring, but Brock, you know, evading it, grabbing Bron from behind, suplex city, taking him all the way there, German suplex, German suplex, German suplex, and in the end, Brock getting hold of Bron and hitting him with a big F5 right in the middle of the ring, laying him out. Brock looking down at Bron, shaking his head, and then Brock leaving the way he came through that now very much open door. <laughs> Chainless as ever. Cody forcing himself back to his feet, you know, what slowly crawling to the ropes and dragging himself up, staring across as Bron who's already starting to get back to his feet, just seemed to make him more mad, you know? But Cody will not let this situation drift past him. As Cody, you know, Bron getting back to his feet, Cody goes up to Bron from behind without Bron seeing and just yoinks him down. Bron caught off guard. Cody grabs him and hits him with a big crossroads. Lays him out. Forces himself to his feet even more groggy, and hits him with another, before covering him for the one, two, three. Your winner, in probably, but not impossibly, Cody Rhodes. Thanks to a little help from Brock, Bra Brock Lesnar at the end there, uh, and Jey Uso just kind of leaving. Cody Rhodes has done it. For an 81, yes, 84 Cody, 75 J, 71 Bron, 60 Solo, 49 Marshall, 43 Ross, and yes. At WrestleMania, it will be the Tribal Chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns, the Universal Champion, defending his gold against the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes has done it for a 100. That's how the show ends. Cody Rhodes... With whatever energy he still has in his body, climbing up to the top of the pod, grabbing a hold of the chains. You know, he's swaying a bit, but grabbing a hold of the chains to steady himself. And from the top of the pod, Cody pointing at that sign as the pyro explodes. Cody Rhodes is going to WrestleMania to fight for the world title. For a 100, lovely end to the show. Uh, and this is going to get in in just about an hour, so hey... We'll take that. 89 overall. Very happy with that. Very good show. Uh, a lot confirmed for WrestleMania. Now, EO versus Kari for the Women's World title is confirmed. Roman versus Cody for the Universal title is confirmed. Um, Randy Orton versus Austin Theory. Pete Dunne, Seth Rollins for the WWE title. Kyler Riley, Triple H. A lot being confirmed. And you can probably see where a lot of different things are probably going in terms of WrestleMania. So, yeah, it's exciting. Road to WrestleMania, well and truly, on to the final stretch. Now, five more weeks, oh God. <laughs> IRL, it's WrestleMania in days, and I have five weeks to get through, so God knows when I'm going to do Mania, but I'm excited, and I hope you are too. Let's make my speeches. Cody, you're going to Mania, so shout out to you. Um, who put on bangers? Uh, your match wasn't the greatest, but Tony, I love you, so I'll give you a little, give you a little, a little kissy kissy. Um, God. I'm trying to think who's put on a banger. EO put on a banger. Go on, EO. Uh praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Cody's happy. Tony's happy. EO's happy and I'm happy. I hope you're happy too. I hope you have enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below as we on to the final stretch of the road to WrestleMania now. Leave a like if you have enjoyed. I hope you have. And subscribe for more. And as always, I just want to say a very special thank you for watching. Peace.